and we're back. I'm Cynthia Becker with attorney Vince Davis on The Secret, How to Fight CPS and Win. We'll take another caller. This is Tammy from California. So much. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Okay. We're going to take another caller from Nick in Dakota. Nick? Hi. Hi. Yeah, I'm here. How can, can you we... hear me? Yes, loud and clear. What is your question for us? Well, there's a lot of stuff from the beginning, but I, I'm, I'm going to focus on where I'm at right now with the case. Um, they had a, I had a TPR hearing like a week ago um, where they were going for termination of my rights, and uh, uh, the, there was a fill-in judge, a substitute judge, and the last two times, and... Um, I have been turning in everything, and the judge said, well, it looks like he's making progress, but it's already almost to the two-year two year mark, um, so it's been getting reviewed, I think, twice over or three times now. I've had three different reviews after the year mark, and uh, so now I've got another one for December 22nd, and I'm struggling on what to do because I've already completed my case. Like I've done treatment and got a letter of certification from my treatment counselor saying I, I graduated. I was paying for my own UAs here, $60 a week, driving about 100 miles round trip to go to be able to do them. Um, well, after I graduated and after this last hearing, it seemed like it didn't matter. I was doing all this stuff. It still they wanted to terminate my rights. So, um, I went into this thinking I was going to lose my rights um, at the last hearing, and the judge went with reunification and permanency. Now they're supposed to be working on both now right. um, at, the same, at the same time, um, but they're still trying to terminate me. Um, I, my attorney doesn't talk to me at all. Like, it's a court appointed lawyer, and I don't ever get to talk to her except for, like, right before court. And I'm out of state in a different state where this is happening, so I do my, my hearing through, through phone conference or Zoom um, so far. Um, but I'm just – the last hearing, they brought up how the, my sister was never approved for an ICP. Um, uh, the, the head honcho of the welfare team told the, everybody that there was not, no knowledge of this happening, and I've got proof of that. She was approved for the ICP, and she did the home studies and everything so he could come here to North Dakota where I'm at and uh, they denied it. Well, hold on a judge second. Nick, did North Dakota yeah. deny it or did the state where your cases deny it? Okay. So first off, at the beginning of all this, at the shelter care hearing that I never Nick, had. Nick, you got to answer that question for me. Okay. Um, North, no, Idaho is saying that North Dakota denied. Okay. Yeah. Have you, have you seen the report? Oh, wait, was my sister? Yeah. Excuse me. My sister, both sides approved her and him to be here. Okay, so stop. But since stop. they picked... Stop. Oh. Okay. If both sides approved, what you need to do is insist with your lawyer to make that happen under North under Idaho law. You need to okay. get that done now. Um, you know, I'm licensed in California. You're in North Dakota, cases in Idaho. Yeah. So I'm just going to tell you what I would do if... You, if the case and you were in California, I'd make a motion to have your child placed immediately with your sister. Okay. So you need to talk to your lawyer. And if your lawyer can't help you, you need to talk to a lawyer in Idaho that's going to be able to help you. Okay. Yeah, because you're, okay. you're running out of time. I mean, yeah. in my mind, you're lucky that you got six more months of family reunification services. You need to take mm -hmm. advantage of that. And first of all, get the child moved. Once you got the child moved, then go for, you know, the juggler and show the judge that you have done everything to get the child placed back with you. But while, while all that is happening, get the child with your sister because I'm assuming she's a friendly relative. Hey, Nick, she's I want yeah. Nick, I wanna, classes. Great. Yeah. Nick, I want to thank you for listening. Thank you for calling in. Call us in a few weeks. Give us an update. Let us know uh, how things are going. What do you think about that case? I hope he gets them placed with his sister or a relative. Right. You know, I don't know how many people know this about you. I know this. Okay. You ready? Uh-oh. <laughs> what you going to say? <laughs> no, I hear, being that I had a case, 
I had a court-appointed attorney. I wonder how many people knew or know that you were a court-appointed attorney. I was a court-appointed attorney many moons ago. Um, I started doing this type of law in 1989, January 2nd, 1989. I did my first juvenile case in Los Angeles County. Uh, at, at that point in time, they were doing cases in the criminal courts building, and I was in Department 239, Department 239, and an attorney, uh, a friend of mine, a mentor, who's recently unfortunately passed away, Michael D. Randall, a graduate of uh, UC Berkeley and Bolt Hall Law School, was my mentor. I think that we should do your story soon because when I interviewed you before, I loved everything that you had to say about your life prior to being the attorney that you are today and how you got here. That's an interesting story, interesting journey, a long road. It's been almost 30 years. Well, I loved hearing it, and I think (laughs) everybody else would love to hear it too. Okay, we can talk about that sometime. It looks like we're going to take a break. This is The Secret, How to Fight Child Protective Services and When. We'll be back with more stories and more questions. You're listening.